Hello everybody, what's the crack? And welcome back to episode number 40 of the Inline G Flute Podcast with me, your host, motherfucking Inline G. Buongiorno lads. Spring has sprung, the clocks are forward, the April spritzes are out. So listen, go pour yourself something nice and maybe even Italian and get ready for something very special this week. So today we've got another episode from my recent trip to Zurich where I went to visit my best friend Jad. Check out last week's episode for that. So while I was there, I had a morning free and I stuck into Google. Who is tooting their flute in this beautiful Swiss city? And I was delighted to find out that recent Nissan competition winner and Berlin Philharmonic Carian Academy graduate Alberto Navarra has just joined the Tonhalle Orchestra in Zurich. By the way, an incredible orchestra. The chief conductor is the Estonian behemoth Pavel Yarvi. So I fired Alberto a message on Instagram and before you know it, we're in a practice room down at the Tonhalle itself, sipping on a Dr. Pepper and chatting about his brand spanking new album with the Odense Symphony Orchestra. On that album, you have the Mozart Flute and Harp Concerto with Claudio Lucia Lamana, as well as the Reinecke Concerto and the Nielsen Concerto. Brilliant album. So if you want to get to that episode, skip ahead now. But before then, as always, <clears throat> the Inline G podcast is free and always will be free. However, if you want to donate to the podcast, you can now do so through the Patreon. On the screen now is the address, and for the audio listeners, it is patreon.com forward slash the N9G flute podcast. It costs five euros a month, or dollars, or pounds, and with that, you're keeping this podcast alive. I do everything around here on my own, including marketing, graphic design, research scripts, audio production, video production, etc., etc., So, becoming a patron helps generate a regular income for this podcast, meaning I can turn down other work to focus on it, and I can tell potential problematic sponsors to go fuck themselves. And I also get to travel to go and meet the best flute players in the world and ask them who their favourite Spice Girl is. As a thank you, you'll get to put your your questions to these guests before everyone else, and you'll get a wee bit earlier access to every single episode. So, if you can afford it, sign up over there. You can unsubscribe at any time. Jumping in and out is no problems. If you can't afford it, it means a huge amount. It really helps. I cannot tell you how great it is. But if you can't afford it, that's grand. You can keep listening for it free. So, please enjoy this week's Inline G podcast with Italian flutist Tonhalle Principal Flute, 2022 Nissan Competition winner, Carian Academy graduate, and Juventus superfan Alberto Navarra. Yeah, are you doing any rehearsals this week? Anything coming up? Anything fun? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm on break, actually. Now. Yeah. Uh, I will start again on, I mean, Tuesday, I don't know when yeah. the, the release of podcasts. Uh, I will start next oh, week yeah. for Messen uh, B minor of Bach. Oh, the Bach yeah. B minor. Yeah, because we are uh, before oh, Easter. Easter, and, of course. Yeah. Of course, and... Oh, and there's that beautiful flute yeah, solo yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the I first time you'll be playing the flute yeah, solo? Exactly. Oh, nice. Are you yeah, excited? Yeah. I'm very excited. Are you nervous so, as well, or is it just excitement? No, I, w- I was a bit more nervous a um, couple of weeks ago because I played uh, Prelude à la Primédie d'Enfant. Oh, really? Uh, for the first time? For the first time. For well? the first time oh. And on probably yeah, the second week, you work in Turkish, you see, and it's not, it's not the best. And I have to say, I was <laughs> not. Um, very, I mean, with a good health because I had like flu and oh, fever the day before. The day before so, your first prelude, wow. Yeah, <laughs> and with a lot of cough and oh, coughing a lot, yeah. And that's the worst, like feeling like you need to cough <laughs> yeah. is the worst. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So I, I okay? was quite nervous. No, at the end, it, yeah. it went good, yeah. How did the conductor do it? Does he do like the, or who conducted? Who was the conductor for the concert? Uh, Pavel. Oh, yeah, Pavel yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And does he sort of like just let you do it or does he conduct it or? Uh, the beginning, no, it's solo. So he, he just... suggested a few things, of course, during rehearsal. Uh, yeah. But on the second time, when there's a repetition of yeah. the theme, then it's, uh, then it's conducted. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You need, because if not, you, you cannot uh, ver- listen very well the mm. um, the orchestra yeah. at that point and it has to be stable. Oh, the first ever prelude. It must yeah. be so exciting as well. Yeah, super, super. I was a bit nervous, but... Uh, of course, yeah. Have you especially done... the first rehearsal, because I never played even with piano. Oh, really? Okay. Even the piano version. I just played the, the solo for probably for Spiel, yeah. yeah, of yeah. course. And uh, oh, first ever yeah. time. Yeah. And have you played? Um, have you done the Ravel, Daphne and Chloe solo yet? No, never. Okay. No, no, Are you excited no, for that one? Do you think that'll come up soon? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, no. 
Um, yeah, maybe I don't know. Next season, I have to check very well the um, the programs. I yeah. don't know. Has next season been announced yet? Have they announced uh, next season's program? N- not officially. I mean, okay. we okay. already know yeah. something, okay. of course, but well, I won't tell it's not. It's <laughs> not official. Yeah, we won't talk about it then. I don't uh, want to get in trouble sorry. with uh, Todd Halen Zurich <laughs> for that one. Cool. And yeah, you've only been here three months. You were telling me. No, three weeks. Three weeks. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. Man, it's three very weeks. Very new experience. I mean, uh, I started first of March. Yeah. I of course was only three yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's man, new experience. And I finished the academy in Berlin in February. Yeah. So and then straight over then here. Then straight. No over. break. Man. Yeah. I mean, I I had two three weeks of. I mean, way uh, break, but I had to play concerts like chamber music solo. Yeah, uh, okay. And so I yeah. was busy also. Oh, yeah. yeah, what a three weeks as well, because in that time your albums came out as well. So you've exactly. had an album release and a new job to start in the same month. How's the album going? What's good. the reception like? I think good. I mean, yeah. um, there are a few playlists on Spotify. So yeah. Especially Mozart, the Andantino. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be the, be- the, the yeah, top one, isn't the it? Top it's such a famous one. Yeah. Also, Reineke. I mean, uh, it's it's good. I, yeah. I, I don't know. It's my very first album. Yeah, it's my so debut, so I really don't know. You don't know and, what to and expect. I was either. so uh, busy also for the new job, and yeah. that's why I, I was. I wasn't focused 100% on the release, the release of the album. Of the album. I was when like, did you record the album? I recorded last year in January. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay, so, it's been so a long more time than, for... than one year, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and have you got any reviews? Have you read any reviews yet? Not yet. Okay. Uh, it will be, I think. Okay. Well, if you want my review, I think it's excellent. <laughs> okay. I was listening to, I listened to it last weekend when it came out for the first time, and I listened to it today, actually, when I was walking around Zurich. It is very nice. It's a wonderful album. I think my favorite is the Mozart because with the Mozart, I always find the Mozart Foot and Heart Mozart of this is for the listeners. Um, tempos are so important. I always think that some people play it just a little bit too fast sometimes, and it kills it for me. But with your tempos, I did really like them, especially the first and third movements. I thought they were just lovely. Thank you. Who picks the tempos? Did you pick them, or do you talk with your heart player, or do you talk with a conductor, or? Uh, with the art player, we both decided the right tempo. Yeah. Uh, to not play too fast. Yeah. Uh, because of also for the harp, it's not it's not easy concerto, especially no. for to be very clear and yeah. and very speaking playing. You see, yeah. and uh, we decided to to play not too 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 slow and not too fast. Yeah, just the right let it speak. the right the right spirit. I yeah. think. I mean, we we both yeah, agreed. You yeah. yeah, you do your best. For it. Do you know that you know the harp player from before? <laughs> Actually, I decided to um, when when they proposed me to to record this album. Yeah, I decided to contact uh, Claudia because she also won a competition the same year of uh, when I won Nielsen competition, yeah. and she won the Israel competition. Ah, okay. Rap is very okay. important. Uh, it's an international. I mean, in the this group of yeah. very important competitions, and. So I decide, why not? We are both Italian. Uh, yeah, she's, that's She's ama- amazing art player. And I decided to, to ask her if she wanted to play with okay. me. And it was the right... I, I wanted to play Mozart uh, Flute and Harp Concerto. is one of my okay, favorites. It and beautiful concerto. It's beautiful. And I already had the chance to play the other concertos. Uh, yeah, so the, it was the only one that I didn't... You haven't played yet? Okay. Yeah, I haven't played yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, did you decide the repertoire for the album? I, I, I decided, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nielsen was kind of... Uh, yeah. Well, after man- winning Nielsen, Not, not yeah. mandatory, but they suggest to also record yeah, Nielsen. Kind of have to, yeah, uh, it's, it's okay. I mean, I also like this concerto. It's and a beautiful concerto. I played m- many times and it was... And then why Reinecke? Reinecke, because I wanted to to have a like a complete uh, yeah because it was my debut album yeah. and i wanted to to be very with different period with yeah, different so styles and, and i wanted i wanted a romantic piece yeah. also because if not i had to choose um maybe um a 20th century concerto Iber, Iber would uh, be the one yeah wouldn't it yeah but with nielsen it's, it's kind already of 20th already, century yeah, yeah. Yeah, normally it's Eber or Nielsen, isn't it? And also, I, I wanted to play Reinecke, I said, why not? I mean, yeah. I have the chance and... Especially I with like an orchestra, orchestra, like with an orchestra, orchestra like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, was it fun recording with the orchestra? 
Yeah, really fun. It was very, um, uh, we didn't have so much time, I have to say. Uh, we had five days for rehearsal and recordings. Of, for all three for concertos? all three concertos. Whoa. So it was quite, um, I mean. Intense? Intense, man. exactly. Three concertos in five days. Is that normal? Yeah. Is that the kind of time you think it normally takes? I don't know. Uh, I think nowadays uh, people are very fast. Yeah. And I also had an experience recording with uh, Berliner Baroque Solisten. I, um, but in the orchestra, not yeah. Uh, yeah. in front. Um, and I remember uh, Berliner Baroque Solisten is the ensemble of uh, Berliner Philharmonica, yeah. like a yeah. gig ensemble yeah. uh, for especially, I mean, Baroque music, classical yeah. music. Um, and I remember we had like one rehearsal and then one through of recordings. And, and that's it. And it worked. I mean, uh, yeah, well, with musicians with, of that with, quality, yeah, especially. Mm, Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so you have to be super fast. Oh yeah, I can imagine. And on the album as well, the album cover. Whose idea was that, or where did that come from? I love the album cover. Really, it's a really cool <laughs> idea. Yeah, I like these like modern albums. It almost looks like a. It could be a rock album. If you weren't holding the flute, it could be like a rock or a rap album, which I like. I like making it a little bit fresher instead of these sort of old dated styles. Um, but was it your idea to put the album cover in, or? Yeah, I. I mean, I. I did this photo shoot. Um. Um, af- I think after recording, no, I don't, re- I don't remember okay. yet. But um, where is it actually? Where is the background? In Turin. Oh, in okay. Turin, okay. In the industrial uh, oh, area. Okay, it's like a I home mean, shoot, a home. Yeah, yeah. it's a bit uh, far away f- um, to the city. Uh, okay. it's it's called Parco d'Ora. Uh, okay, uh, close to. I mean, it's still in Turin, but in a bit. Okay. Uh, on the, I mean, not in the center. Yeah, the only thing I know about Turin is Juventus. That's that's all I know about Turin. So, <laughs> and, uh, is it anywhere near the stadium? No, <laughs> is it near? I I don't think so. No, no, no. It's another area. But that's a good idea, though. Doing a photo a photo shoot for your album in the stadium. Yeah, uh, maybe your next album you can do yeah, that. Maybe, maybe yeah. Yeah, Juventus. <laughs> yeah, we can contact Juventus if they're listening. If anyone's listening for the podcast, me, you can go and do a shoot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nobody's done that yet. I don't think. I don't think I've ever seen a flute player do a photo shoot in a football stadium yet. No, I don't think so. It's, it's, you can be the good. first. Uh, maybe. maybe you can be the first. Yeah, you do Juventus. <laughs> yeah, I'll why do not? one in Bayern Leverkusen and then. Yeah, we'll okay. be good. We'll be good. <laughs> yeah, it was a really cool. Yeah, so it was a photo shoot, and then did you just go? Yeah, I love these photos. I want that to be my album cover. Or does the record label say? I, I picked three photos of this photo shoot. Yeah, and I sent to them, and they picked this this one. Okay. I, I also, I, I mean, agree, and that was it. I, I mean, I sent it, and it's it's nice because you see, I mean, another. I don't know. It's it's fresh. Then yeah. No, I think it. We have to to be. I don't know. A bit different. Um, in 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 terms of style. I mean. I agree. Uh, you mean as a classical? Yeah, musician? as a yeah. classical musician, we we have to be modern. Uh, so yeah, there's some great the album covers coming out now as well. Like I don't know if you saw Julian Baudimont, um, his new album California Dreaming had a beautiful cover. It was like him in a like a swimming pool with this beautiful like stylized font that looked like a seventies kind of punk album or something. It was mm-hmm. so cool. I thought it's so nice to see flute players making albums that just look cool because it helps when you're selling it too because I think a lot of people who aren't into classical music when they see some covers like obviously Deutsche Grammophon make incredible albums they're wonderful but a lot of their covers can be quite classic but if you see like your album people will go oh that looks interesting they wouldn't necessarily know it's a classical music album and then they buy it and then they listen to it and then great yeah, yeah, yeah. we're all winning yeah it's really cool what else do I want to ask you about the album there's so much I want to ask you about the album oh the record label they're a British record label, aren't they? Yeah. Orchid Classics. Orchid is How British. did that come about? How did you find them? Or did they contact you? Or No, actually, it was part of, of the price of the competition. Ah, and okay. they already are already in... I mean, uh, they work since yeah. many years yeah. together okay. uh, with the competition. and But, I mean, they, they were great and they helped me to how to promote. And yeah. they say... Okay. I mean, I'm very happy. And yeah, basically, is promoting difficult? 
It's not easy. It's yeah, not easy. I think it could be really hard, can't it? Yeah, and I, I'm I'm not so happy 100% of what I, I did because I was very focused also on, on my new job. My new and job, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the release date was already fixed since um, few few months. Okay, so yeah, so you had to be there. I, I, had, I had to be here. It's and a lot, dude, yeah. Yeah, I had to find a compromise and... Yeah. It's, uh, if you can record a reel, it will be nice. Oh, and yeah, of course. I say, okay, when I have time, because I, I, I don't. No time, yeah. <laughs> well, you can tell them that you went on a podcast to talk about it now. You can say, yeah. oh, yeah, I was on the N9G podcast and promoted it. Exactly. They'll be very happy. <laughs> and then you can tell them to sponsor the podcast and give me money. Oh, I'm joking. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I, so the album, is it available physically as well, or is it only on streaming? Can we get CDs of it? No, it's also physically. Yeah, yeah. CDs, vinyls as well, or just CD? CDs cool okay yeah yeah uh, obviously I listen to it on Spotify so I recommend everyone goes and listens to it yeah I mean in Spotify Apple Music there are oh yeah many, everywhere yeah. everywhere of course I mean, yeah. The, yeah, digital platforms. Yeah. yeah we should say it's everywhere yeah and where can people buy the CD do you have, is it on is it for sale on your website the CD I uh, I, I had to work a bit on, okay. on that uh, I, I put something uh, okay. on, on the website um, but the there are many stores online also. Okay, yeah, so you can you find can it somewhere. Find, yeah. Maybe you find it in your local music shop. Someone can go and find it. There we are. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, yeah, you just started this, and you were telling me as well, you just finished the Berlin Philharmonic Academy, what, like a month ago, two months ago? Uh, yeah, um, couple, yeah, okay. two months. Yeah. And how long were you there? Uh, one and a half year, more or less, yeah. Okay. I started September 22. Cool, okay. Uh, actually, it was very nice i mean i supposed to start l after september mm -hmm. um but my colleague anya the other yeah. flute academy anya malkov yeah had Super a problem okay. with visa for the european tour the festival ah, tour okay. to go to london okay uh, oh, yeah, the, well. the the proms you see the fest since brexit yeah yeah, yeah. and she had a problem because she is from serbia and yeah it was a different yeah, moment for visas, yeah and at the end they called me to for i mean substitutions okay and they called me like three days just before the the first rehearsal and i wasn't prepared at all because was it, wa it was uh, end of august and i said oh okay uh, <laughs> i i wanted to i don't know to party a little bit more uh, <laughs> holidays yeah. and go you see no i have to go <laughs> uh, what and it was buy? amazing it it uh, was um, incredible memory. Um, we played Mahler Seventh oh, Symphony, uh, so great program. Yeah, uh, very. There's nice a lot of flutes in that. Is there four or five? Five, flutes? five, yeah. Five flutes. Oh. We I played third flute, which uh, and was doesn't have any anything. Uh, I mean, complicated, but but still you get the. But still in, in Berlin, Phil is amazing, and I remember the very first rehearsal. It was with a crazy energy and you, you could see the the stand vibrating for the yeah. energy for oh. every string player played in a that very intense yeah that I, I love that else. yeah uh, who's playing principal uh, emmanuel Pai, yeah like even just for the experience of sitting beside emmanuel Pai, it must be really cool. yeah it's pretty like man there he is there he is yeah, yeah. what's he like as a guy is he cool yeah, it's, it's everyone's very cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, man, I'm doing my absolute Mr. best Mr. to get him on this podcast. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I really want to get him you on. You should, you should, you should. This is going to be. I think this is going to be episode number forty. And in my head, I'm thinking either episode fifty or episode fifty-two for one year. I want to get him on your page. I'm building up to him though. I'm trying to find other people as well, and then they all tell him, "Oh, I went on this podcast," and maybe he'll. Maybe, maybe. More maybe. You you should go to, um, to Berlin maybe when he. I would playing. go. I I would walk to Berlin if I could get the man you on the podcast. Man, he's like the number one guest <laughs> I want on the podcast. But or maybe James Galway as well. Those are the two. Uh, maybe uh, Jim James Galway is. He's not far from here. No, actually, yeah. Far, no, yeah. No, he, Have you ever met him? Yeah. Oh, twice. Yeah. Uh, um, when we played with Berlin uh, in Lucerne Festival, oh, and I we usually we, we usually with the flute section. Uh, we went to have a dinner with him and yeah. Jeannie. Uh, yeah, I wife. saw that because it was on Instagram, I think, with the flute section going out for dinner yeah. with, with Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, it, it was very cool. <laughs> and you met him twice then? You met twice, him somewhere else? Uh, uh, because we played two, two, um, two times. I mean, okay. uh, the first year with the Smaller Sevens tour yeah. Uh, yeah. because his festival tour is usually Salzburg, Luzern, uh, 
Salzburg, Salzburg Festival, yeah. um, yeah. Luzern, and then uh, London, and the, the, the next year we played in Salzburg, Luzern, and Paris, and Luxembourg. Oh, nice. It was yeah. a year and a half playing with the Berlin Philharmonic. And any highlights? Any particular moments? Of st- I'm sure it's all a highlight. I mean, the, the, the very first rehearsal it was already an highlight because I I, I wasn't prepared um, to this kind of energy and yeah. this. I also didn't have so much experience in the orchestra to say. Okay. So okay. Um, I played um, a few times in Italy, uh, also with good orchestras, um, but it's not the same. No, the same style, this. the same. Yeah. And I never played like a huge program like this with Mahler. Yeah. Um, but it was amazing. I remember uh, also when we played Mahler that the second flute was already playing very very loud yeah. and very with such energy and yeah. says wow that's a, <laughs> as a second flute it's a second flute yeah. <laughs> yeah. yelka i mean amazing yeah. and i i um, i always saw that in in italy as a second flute you should play less or but yeah it's not it's, it's not the same in, uh, yeah i changed a completely uh mentality yeah what else did you learn from playing in the berlin philharmonic academy to be to be very quick and fast to yeah. to and to re, um, very reactive yeah. to the conductor to the musician what's yeah. happening you have to be very uh, with ears to the orchestra to the other musicians yeah. to catch what they propose and yeah. uh, to be very flexible so are they always sort of like changing their ideas and proposing yeah, new yeah, things yeah. It's, sort of it's chamber music but that's what everyone the, says yeah. the, the big yeah, uh, way, everyone you know? says that the Berlin Philharmonic are like a chamber group, but there's just like a hundred of them. Mm-hmm. But it still feels like chamber music. And also play with, I mean, always with the, the right intensity or right, uh, the right spirit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you feel like you had to adapt your sound or anything to fit the Berlin Philharmonic? Or, I mean, as academies, uh, I, I played one and a half year, but not every week. So uh, we... we we don't have this time to adapt the sound. I yeah, think. okay, okay. But we learn how to or how they um, yeah. adapt the sound and okay. uh, what they need to. I mean, yeah. the, this kind of sound, uh, this energy. Yeah, I'm mostly it's the about. energy. I think is it? Yeah, more yeah. than the sound, it's the energy. The, the sound is flexible. Depends on the conductor. Depends on yeah. But uh, what I loved of Berlin Philharmonic is that they very ri- risk. Uh, like the dynamics yeah they it's go right to the edge huge deep, yeah. uh, range of colors oh, I saw them once doing uh, Beethoven 3 the Eroica in Paris when I lived there and it was one of the few times where like, I just had to cry in a concert because there's like that beautiful bit in the last movement where it goes very quiet and you've got the little woodwind like choral bit and just the, they got so quiet and so delicate after this huge sound the dynamics were obscene they were enormous and you were like why the fuck do you do that? <laughs> how does an orchestra do that? It's so... like I don't think you appreciate how good the Berlin Phil are until you see them live. Mm. Until you really hear them and you're, part, you're in the room and you're like, these guys are wild. Yeah, yeah. They're so good. Who was uh, who was conducting? Who was the... Uh, Petrenko. Yeah, mother, still, yeah. Um, but I also played with many other good conductors. Uh, Go on, tell us. Uh, give us some names. Uh for instance, uh, Tugan Sukiev. Uh, I also played with Pavo. Uh, ah, did Pavo? you go to the, the yeah. Berlin as well? Pavo, okay, cool. uh, Thieleman, uh, amazing also. Um, I, I don't remember. I don't, Italians? No, I, I never I never had the chance no. to play with Daniele Gatti, for uh, instance. No, or, or Ricardo Muti or uh, anything no, like that? No, never, no. no. Would it's, you like that? Yeah. Yeah. Super, yeah. super. Is there any conductor you think, oh, I'd love Yeah, maybe once. with opera would be nice. Oh, yeah. If I play him once. That's opera. very Italian, yeah. Yeah. yeah Have you played sure. opera? Have you done opera before? Um, Not yet. Not okay. Yet. No, it's because I was the... I mean, already in the symphonic. Yeah. Uh, now here in Zurich, I'm in yeah. the symphonic orchestra. Yeah, you guys don't I, do I play, here, I no? played uh, Bühne music, um, stage music yeah. in Baden-Baden. Okay, okay. So, um, with the fi- Berliner yeah. Philharmonic. Uh, last year, but I played like nine bars. <laughs> oh yeah, but still, it's still nine bars with the Berlin Philharmonic. Man, I think most people kill yeah. that opportunity. Oh, that is cool. I would, man. The experience of playing in the Berlin Philharmonic just must be. I, I put them so high above everyone else in my head. 
I still think they are the orchestra for me. I've seen every orchestra in the world, like all the major orchestras in the Berlin Phil are still just... Yeah, they are. And Bayou especially, man. And uh, Dufour as well, like Mathieu Dufour, is, was he there still? When no, you were... uh, uh, Sebastien Jaco. Oh, Sebastien, yeah, okay. Um, he's no, also he's incredible. Yeah, yeah, he's also amazing. So you got to play with both of them then? Yeah, yeah, yeah I played 50-50. What's the yeah. difference between playing with them, for example? I mean, they are both great. Yeah. And they are a bit different also in characteristics. Yeah. Uh, but it was super in yeah. both cases I mean uh, they are very uh, musical side, very yeah I think they're both that kind of player where their biggest strength is how they adapt to every type of music they're doing like, yeah they can play anything and, like yeah. th- it's with Emmanuel Baby for example like when you listen to James Galway no matter what he plays you go that's James Galway we know that's James Galway with Baby sometimes I'm like is that Baby because he changes his style so much to fit the music He's a real proper chameleon. You never really know because he's so different. And I feel like Sebastian Jaco is very, very similar. Like, yeah, you can do anything and they do it so well. Do you feel like you like brought a bit of their playing in? Did you inherit anything from them? or? Well, we had the chance to, to have lesson with okay. them. So I hope to, <laughs> to yeah. got something from... What do you think you learned? Or what do you think you got from it? Um, I think ma- many... Th- the approach to the music... With the flute, yeah, uh, and also I think mm, how to to lead uh, the music, yeah, okay, and not to be uh, not reacting, yeah, to okay, the music. to take control of it and the yeah, yeah, okay, to create, I mean, lead, uh, yeah, 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 uh, maybe you know what I mean. Uh, I do know exactly it, what you mean. Yeah, it, it's not easy uh, because I was al- always very uh, talented in musical things, and yeah, but I. Mm, always maybe uh, was reacting to to the music and mm. not the opposite I yeah. sh- when when you are a professional musician you should uh, yeah cause, I mean yeah because you're in charge you're the one that's getting paid to do it exactly. you're yeah people come and no um, very well how to do I mean I'm still in process so yeah of course well, everyone I think everyone's uh, yeah. in process for yeah. the rest of their lives mm-hmm. yeah um, and then before that so you study with Andrea Oliva, before that was a Jack Zun. Before Jack, yeah. Jack Zun in Madrid. And yeah, before Madrid, uh, Andrea Oliva, okay. Andrea Manco. Okay, then we'll Italy. start with Jack Zun because I am such a fan of Jack Zun. Mm. I love Jack Zun, man. He's great. What was it like studying with him? Yeah, it was super. Uh, very inspiring, um, first of all. Um, I When I when I decided to, to study with Jack, um, I was... I mean, I I took this decision because of musical idea. No, yeah. Jacques is He's amazing, for that, amazing yeah. for uh, if you listen to the Lucerne Festival Orchestra yeah. in Abado era, the solo of Jacques were yeah. stunning. No, and and the intensity of his playing it was it, still. I mean, but uh, for me. It was so ma- so 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 inspiring, and is he that? Is he like that in lessons as well? Is he very high? Yeah, energy, yeah, very... yeah. Um, his Seems lesson, like that kind of guy. he focused very well on on the on the music uh, things, of course. Um, when I started, I um, the first two, three, four lessons, I wasn't very convinced on his yeah. way of playing flute yeah it was completely different than our uh, school in italy yeah. um Dif- to be fair, especially to how, how to play the flute uh but i learned that it doesn't matter and also i learned also few technical things yeah yeah from him. and it helped me to be not fixed on on one, one direction side, yeah and, and yeah one yeah side, and to be very open mind and well, it's not the thing as well. Like you sort of take little bits from different teachers, and then you mix them together and you put them in. Yeah, it depends on 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 yourself. I mean, on your taste on, mm. and you create the the way of playing the the taste and the, what do we like. Uh, of course, we we can pick yeah. um, qualities. Yeah, like not to copy, but be inspired by. Yeah, be take, inspired. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, certain it's, ideas or certain things. You go, oh, yeah. yeah, I like that. I want to. Learn. Yeah, and when I did the audition in in Berlin in the Carol Academy, um, Emmanuel said, "Ah, oh, okay, uh, you studied with Jacques, but I didn't notice that you studied oh, okay. with Jacques." 
Okay. It's a compliment because that is there a compliment, are many yeah. students that try to imitate too much yeah. the playing of Jack that if it fits Jack, Jack, but not maybe other it's not, yeah. musician. It's artificial, no? Yeah. It's which I can understand because Jack plays so special. Personal, yeah. It's so special that you I can understand wanting to copy that because you really like it, so you're like, well, I want to do that. Yeah, it's amazing. But we do have to sometimes you don't want to be like a copy of your teacher yeah. rather. And he's very um, distinct to yeah. other flutists. He's, so yeah. you notice immediately. A hundred percent. No, and it's a pity if you if you do like a copy of uh, it is a little bit, yeah. No. Although it's nice to hear in certain players like little bits where you go, "Oh, that sounds a little bit like someone." You know, I like that. I like when I listen to players. Yeah. Go, oh, there's a bit of manual play in there. There's a bit of this. There's a bit of that. I like that. I like seeing the links. I like you know, sort of, yeah, seeing where they were inspired. I think it's fun to hear that. Not like it directly, but just a little bit. You go, "Oh, that sounds a little bit Bayou." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's. I find a lot with the Italians because obviously the Italian flute school at the minute is incredible because you've got Andrea, you've got David Formizano doing great things. You can hear there's a very like Italian way of playing. Do you find that though? No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know. I, what do you mean? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Yeah. Uh, but both they were inspired to Galway, for instance. School. I was about to say, yeah. So it's yeah. Italian school, but <laughs> Galway <Belfast>. school. <laughs> Belfast. Yeah, it's Belfast school. Yeah. It's yeah. Irish. It's because of us. Yeah. No, it's not even the Belfast school. That's pure Jimmy. There's nothing else. About yeah. It. yeah. But it is so funny because I did a I did a course years ago in. Oh, it's near Nap Salerno. It yeah. did a course there with uh, with Fallout. Fallout. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. So that year I was with Andrea and we went mm. for a beer together after one of the, the concerts. I was chatting to him, he's like, Gareth, you know my dream is to go to Belfast and I was like, Really? <laughs> Your dream's to go to Belfast, man? Uh-huh. Go now if you want to get a plane. He's like, No, just because Jimmy's from there and I've always wanted to see Belfast. I was like, don't, don't worry about it. It's not it's not that great to be honest, Andre. <laughs> no. We're here in Salerno, we're in the mountains, it's much better up here than going to fucking Belfast. But it was so fascinating to see how much they adored Galway as well, how much like respect they had for him and how much they call him Maestro as well. They never refer to him as Jimmy, they're like Maestro Galway. I'm like, oh, that is very cool. Um, and they all play Miramatsu as well. Don't they? Andrea plays Miramatsu still. Yeah. And does David? I think David, uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think so as well. On that, we should say, you've got your beautiful flute out here. I, I was meant to do that as the first question, but we've been having too much fun. Um, you play a Miramatsu. Yeah. 14 carat. Yeah, 14 carats, the, the tube and silver keys. Yeah. Um, it, I bought it like very, I mean, one and two months uh, yeah. ago, uh, I had to change so the flute. New. I think uh, I am. Um, I I I think it, it's very flexible on colors and it fits me. That's why I I, I decided to stay with Muramatsu. So you played uh, Muramatsu before. Yeah, I, well. I played Muramatsu yeah. before. I tried many brands and but. They didn't convince me, so I decided to stay with Muramatsu, and, yeah. and yeah, I feel more comfortable. And oh, they're beautiful instruments, to be fair, Muramatsu. They make great flutes. Hmm. Um, and inline G or offset G? Inline. <laughs> and that's another one. I'm trying to get as many people style. as I can to go for inline. And I mean, um, I I started directly with inline. Yeah. That's, that, and that's yeah. it yeah I just have it yeah but depends on on, on you or on it does, your yeah. end maybe yeah. is uh, if, if you have like um, small hands smaller hands it, and, yeah it helps to have uh, off oh yeah of course yeah did you set. did you consider switching the offset G or was it no, always yeah. no 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 okay once I no I prefer to stay in mm. line Mm-mm. oh very interesting it is a beautiful flute. and B foot joint as well yeah yeah was that important in I mean, in Europe, we play. Uh, I think most of the flute is played with B foot. Yeah, I like. I I got a C foot joint. I like the feeling of a C foot joint. But C foot joint. Uh, um, uh, for instance, the principal flute of Ton Halle mm. also. Uh, my Sabine. colleague Sabine. Yeah, um, incredible she, player. Yeah. Um, oh my god! Amazing. Oh my god. She yeah. she plays C foot. Okay. And, um, and you notice because the it's more brilliant. The I sound think it is, might be, is, yeah. is brilliant. Yeah, very shine. And does she think that's because of the C foot joint? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting to be not too dark. Yeah, okay. Uh, and yeah, with projection, uh, it's very good. Maybe it doesn't help if if you want to have like a big uh, rounded sound. Yeah. Um, but for projection and for be very yeah, brilliant, it helps and. It's very nice. Yeah. yeah. 
I suppose the amount of times, like the amount of times I've done a concert where I need a B foot joint, it's quite rare. And when I do, I just borrow one of someone and put it on the end of my flute for like one concert. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, depends on rare. on your taste and your. I I actually prefer the uh, B foot because uh, it helps with the yeah, sound me more. Yeah. I or understand B. that, mm. yeah. And then, sorry, just to go back to that then. So Jacques, soon before that, Andrea Oliva. What was that like studying with Andrea? With Andrea, I, uh, Andrea also Oliva, Andrea Manco, uh, Maurizio Valentini. Andrea Manco we, uh, I started in the same period with um, all okay, these okay. Uh, masters. Yeah, <laughs> they are, yeah. Um, and in this period, I learned how to play the flute, <laughs> technically. I, yeah. I need yeah. it because I was, uh, I said you, I, I, I was quite talented on musical way and also with flutes, um, things were quite easy at the beginning, since yeah. the beginning yeah. uh, for me. Uh, but at a certain point I wanted to, to, f- to find something else, no, something more, uh, the colors, yes, yeah, that, the, whatever yeah, that is, yeah, to be flexible with the sound, to, mm-hmm. uh, to achieve also um a, a, maybe a big sound and yeah with different yeah uh, shapes um yeah, so i i really i really needed um this uh, back to the uh, like to, basics, to yeah. basics yeah, yeah to long notes and uh, to fix tensions yeah. because I, I had few tension off maybe the shoulder or yeah. um, of the lips yeah sometimes um, so I had to to back again to okay. long okay. notes and relaxing and what and age were you when you, this all happened like sorry what age are you roughly it's like 15, I was 16? no I was quite late at 20 okay. wow okay so yeah. before then were you self-taught or did you have some teachers no or? I had uh, teachers but okay. um, they weren't focused on on yeah. this technical thing yeah. because it it was some, somehow for my age yeah. I already played good okay uh, okay so maybe they didn't want to disturb mm. or maybe they said yeah. few yeah. things but you know they don't uh, it's, get it's, it's way, not yeah. easy uh, I think and at a certain point I I wanted to to do it but it took me a while um, from the age of nineteen twenty yeah. to twenty one twenty two uh-huh. I was. Uh, straight on just technique and just okay. uh, back to this was that what it really was like when you started with did you study with Andrea Manco and Andrea Oliva at the same time uh, well Andrea Manco a bit before uh, okay. but um, yeah mostly close yeah close uh, and with Valentini also my f- um, former teacher in Cuneo the small um, city in Piemonte okay yeah okay in the, the conservatory yeah I, I did it there do you yeah, do you teach as well I do teach. I uh, this year I I left a couple of uh, summer course ah, and cool, okay. some master classes I did already in some conservatory. Where is your summer course this year? Uh, one in Italy in yeah, Livorno. Ah, oh, uh, yeah, I see. In Tuscany. And one, yeah, one I see. Because that's what I think. When you're going to do a summer course, you may as well pick somewhere that's beautiful, got wine <laughs> and food and sunshine. Yeah, and, uh. yeah, and it's a good festival where. Uh, students can also play concerts okay cool. with professors uh, ah. yeah it's it's very nice so like duets and stuff like that or but no uh, also with other professor of um, other musician of the of the other um, instruments, instruments yeah. maybe violin or piano oh, that or, is cool. yeah. okay you can um, play chamber music a- as a professor you can play also cool too. okay and uh, with uh, the maybe the um, the youngest yeah, yeah. can also play concert and it's it's that's very it's fun. very it's very nice have you ever it's done very it before important. no it's my first year okay there, yeah cool. Are you uh, it, usually andrea manco was ah, um, okay, cool. holding this okay yeah i was course. watching a video of andrea manco this morning playing the the foray fantasy there's a great video on youtube of it beautiful playing really, really uh, it's nice amazing yeah the musician um and the other course is in cluj in apoca in romania in romania yeah. oh cool okay yeah, that's beautiful as well, isn't it? It's yeah, nice it's a nice city. There, yeah. Uh, very Austro Hungarian yeah. style city. Yeah. yeah, Cluj is like an old city as well. Is that not? Yeah. Am I right in saying Cluj is near where Dracula? Dracula's yeah, castle is? Yeah, it's Transylvania. Is? Yeah, it is. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? yeah, yeah. I thought that. I only know that again. I only know that from football because Cluj okay. played in the Champions League a few times. Yeah, that's the only. Yeah. Most of my geography is based on football. <laughs> and also, I, I 
yeah, I was worryingly old when I realised that Dracula wasn't real. <laughs> and no. also, Dracula was written by an Irish guy. Bram Stoker wrote Dracula. Ah, He's from Dublin. So okay. Dracula's Irish. <laughs> Everything's Irish in this podcast. <laughs> Always get away back to Ireland. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah, teaching a nice summer course. And you have private students at the minute as well? Not. No. So you don't have not, time. not regular. No, I don't have time. No, yeah. no, Would I, you like to teach more? Maybe in the future. Mm. Now, uh, with some master classes, some courses, that's, in, that's it's, it's enough. enough. And it's yeah. Yeah, well, considering good, how yeah. busy you are at the minute, I can totally understand that. And yeah, because obviously you played Nielsen in the Nielsen competition that year. Yeah, and yeah. When was that? Was that last 2022 when you won Nielsen? Yeah, yeah. 2022. Wow, yeah. oh, it feels it feels more recent than that, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, time flies. So nearly uh, two years. Wow. Yeah. Doesn't feel like it at all. No. <laughs> what do you think you learned from that whole experience? That must have been crazy. Wow, I I was completely um, unprepared to, to win this competition. I um, I had a moment where I really thought to renounce uh, yeah. before the semi-final because I was very stressed uh, about uh, the memory, <laughs> the playing by heart, yeah. Jolivet especially. Uh, oh, the, Jolivet uh, the semi-final yeah. was Jolivet uh, first movement and oh. Carl Philipp and Manuel Bach, uh, D minor, B minor concerto second and yeah. third movement. Yeah. And before the rehearsal with the wow. orchestra, I was okay. Uh, I, I cannot play. I mean, I, I, I miss notes in my head. I was, yeah. you know, I also pre I prepared this competition myself. And oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, after Jacques, I didn't have lesson with anyone. Wow. I mean, I, I restarted to have lesson in Karen Academy. Yeah. But yeah, it was okay. after Nielsen competition. So you prepared entirely on your own for Nielsen? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Also, <laughs> other competition, they audition in, in, um, in Berlin. Yeah. Yeah. And it was wow. quite... Yeah. And I didn't have the chance to play even Nielsen and other pieces with the piano. Oh, really? Okay. No. So uh, it was with my trade with the orchestra. <laughs> Man, that is brave. Okay, I can understand why you're stressed out then. That is very stressful. Yeah, yeah. And just for my own curiosity, when you win a big competition like that, like, what did you do that night? What did you do afterwards for the competition? Do you go and celebrate or are you just like, I need to go to bed? Uh, we celebrate. Uh, I celebrate with other colleagues, but I was also was very tired. <laughs> yeah, you'd be knackered, wouldn't you? Yeah, but the, no, because the result um, were was the... Um, the day after, after yeah. the final, the last time you played, yeah. So it was even more stressful because you play in the yeah. final round and then you, have you still have the all day waiting for the result and ah, oh. crazy. <laughs> but I think sometimes in those competitions, you just want to go out and enjoy the performance, and then when you've played well, you go right. I'm happy with how I played. Yeah, we'll see what happens. That's that's, that's totally. I mean, you obviously get nervous about the results. Everyone does, but yeah, but um, especially after you you play, yeah. yeah. When when is the moment of the result? Of course, yeah. you you feel this. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, angst. Yeah, no I actually pressure. never saw it. But how do they? Did they announce the results? Like, do they do it like TV shows where they say it really slowly and then go, and, then, and the winner is, <laughs> or do they do it a bit more relaxed? Yeah, I mix up. Um, there was a ceremony and uh -huh. um, um, with the orchestra because it was also a concert. Uh, Celebration, yeah, I don't know. yeah. Uh, but we didn't play as a press winner. We, okay, good. We didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want to break, yeah. yeah. And after this uh, concert, the, there was the um, the jury, the head of the jury, Karl yeah. Heinz Schutz, oh, uh, yeah. announced the um, the prize winners, okay. and and then yeah, he started to uh, to say the names um, since the. You go below. I mean, yeah. yeah. The third uh, prize, third and yeah, and second. Uh, so when they do third and second, are you starting to think? Oh, I'm uh, yeah, after the second, yeah, uh, yeah, like, yeah, okay, <laughs> fuck yeah, <laughs> you get and then, oh, cool. <laughs> but, so or maybe uh, they say, okay, no first prize. <laughs> yeah, see that, uh, yeah, I don't think that's ever happened, has it? I haven't seen it happen. <laughs> no, no. Oh, that would be awful. With, like no first prize again. Like, oh, never mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> it must be so much fun though, as well. I can imagine the nerves at it because the Nielsen it's streamed as well on TV and you can yeah, watch yeah. it online and all. Yeah, yeah, it's streamed. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure, but yeah, cool. Um, yeah, it was an incredible year that as well. Yeah, very. Some very good flute players that year. I remember watching that. Yeah, um, the level was. I think high. was Violetta in that year as well. Yeah, Violetta. Yeah. Um, Violetta, 
was um, I mean she won the, um, the prize for prize the yeah. for the, um, the the new piece. Uh, I mean you, we had to compose like a um, collage yeah. piece yeah. Uh, from melodies from Nielsen and uh, yeah it was quite uh, creative and she did. Yeah, I've amazing, heard of her. Yeah. Some of it is really cool. Yeah, she's yeah. a really good girl. She's a really good flute player. That's someone I would love to get in the podcast as well. That's another player I'm trying my best to get. When you do these competitions, do you see the same people everywhere? Do you sort of meet the same people and do you get to know each other? When yeah, basically uh, 70 eighty percent you already know <laughs> the auditions and yeah, you just yeah. all doing it together. We we already knew each other, know each yeah. other, and and yeah. So basically. It's very strange, rare when you you don't see people that you don't yeah. know in an yeah. audition. So, okay, why? Yeah. <laughs> why I don't know anyone? Yeah. Or why yeah. I just know the, uh, um, I don't know, 50%? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's weird, yeah. And you become friends with the people then just by going no, to these? No, yeah, yeah. Um, we are friends. I mean, yeah. uh, and then you, it's it's also a nice experience to, to meet new friends. Yeah, and, it is. Uh, Nielsen competition was... Uh, very uh, or w- very well organized uh, because every night we had dinner together yeah uh, we had beer together there oh, cool. in a yeah. pub uh, yeah. in Odense in this uh, city and so we had the chance to to, to yeah, meet to know each the other flutes and... uh, constant also the um, clarinet and violin uh, okay also. cool yeah um, but of course with flute uh, we, yeah, yeah. yeah we you already know each other yeah Okay, before you go, that we've been talking for quite a while. Before you go, I do have some fun questions for you. Hmm. They're kind of like quick fire, but don't stress, okay? You don't have the answer quickly. It's just, we do them. Don't panic. <laughs> so, yeah, don't worry. People get very stressed out about this. I can edit really? it as well. <laughs> yeah, because I say fun questions. So, like, do I have the answer quickly? No, it's fine. It's fine. It's my podcast. Don't worry. Um, do you have a favorite flute concerto? No. No? Mm-hmm. You couldn't pick one? No. It's very hard, isn't it, to it's pick very, one? Uh, no, I don't... Do no. you have one I at have this particular m- moment, maybe, you prefer? No, not really. No? No, I just... I mean, every piece is different, so... Yeah. I... Okay, there are maybe concerts that I don't like. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I also... <laughs> yeah, you can tell us about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And as a flute player, we don't have so many we don't have, yeah. good concertos. I mean, uh, especially, uh, you know, uh, we have good Baroque pieces and... Yeah good uh, 20th century pieces but yeah but everything in between yeah but there's not, not a lot not yeah. So much, yeah. yeah I suppose you've just released an album with three concertos as well so I can't really ask you that question <laughs> you have to say all three so you get away with that one okay exactly. yeah <laughs> otherwise your record label will be emailing me um, okay do you remember the first flute album that you ever got you either listened to or bought or asked your parents or someone to buy for you hmm it's a good question hmm I don't know. Uh, I think it was. Um, I uh, I learned uh, also uh, to play flute in with YouTube. I mean, I I watched yeah. many YouTube videos. Really? Uh, it was uh, two thousand eight, so YouTube was quite new. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it was already ah. there was something. Do you remember already? who you were watching? Uh, uh, J- James Galway yeah. videos, uh, Emmanuel yeah. videos. Okay. Uh, mostly. Cool. So I don't have any. I mean, I not one specific. Album I wasn't or... grow up with. The, yeah. Okay. Uh, album and yeah. The YouTube probably with flute. I don't know. Emmanuel played Mozart concertos. Pro- yeah. I, I'm not sure. But yeah, that's sure. a, that's a great I'm... one anyway. If you did. Yeah, with a bad your... Yeah, that, yeah, that's the one yeah. I'm thinking of. Yeah. Was that the kind of people you were like? Was that your favorite flute players when you were growing up to listen to people like Pau and Galway? Uh, of course they are yeah. the, the masters yeah. so, uh, well. but I mean Emmanuel of course we I started with him and but Sebastian every every player Andrea yeah. F, yeah. The Jacques I yeah. know many many good ones and yeah I try to not listen any more flutes you see yeah <laughs> I know me too to be uh, fair yeah. yeah to to be 
to find um, um, my own personality yeah. and not be influenced Yeah, you don't want to be influenced yeah. too much. Yeah, I get that. It's, it's very difficult nowadays with all this information. With all the inf- yeah. yeah, and the media. And yeah, we have so much access to it all. It can sometimes mm. be a bit too much because mm. there's a lot of very good flute players out there and it can be a bit overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good answer as well. Yeah, very political. Uh, do, you remember, <laughs> do you remember the first album you bought in general? So not even classical music or... Mm. What what it might have been? What kind of music you were listening to when you were younger? Um, when I was young, um, I'm, so you, middle age school in Italy was uh, so twelve, thirteen. Yeah, uh, I was very on rock. Uh, yeah, I was just about to say if I had to guess, I would have guessed you like indie rock. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean. Uh, I remember, I mean, of course, uh, Led Zeppelin or... Oh, wow, like uh, Good Rock, okay. Yeah, like. yeah, very old style. Um, also, System of a Down, I was quite, Seriously? quite <laughs> strong. That, I'm very surprised that you were a System of a Down fan. Man. Yeah. That's a big one. <laughs> I also played a bit of guitar and mm. keyboard okay. uh, in rock group. But, uh, you when played in a rock yeah, group? Yeah, uh, rock band when I was 13. Or Please I was tell me kid. there's some videos of that. No. Oh, I'm going to tell everyone yeah. to go looking for yeah, them. Yeah. I haven't checked the Yeah, fortunately, <laughs> the... the Smartphone were not so popular at the time, oh, yeah. so no recording. So that's probably of best. That. Yeah, that's probably yeah. good. Oh, you played in a rock band, it's System of a Down. That was not what I was expecting. There. Really good answer. Yeah, I love that question. Also, jazz answers. music in yeah. I also played jazz music. Uh, oh, really? Okay. In uh, high school, I had um jazz, jazz really? music. Band. Yeah, I mean, of course, very amateur and not yeah, but professional. Still, not yeah. Okay, but uh, it was nice playing Herbie Hancock or oh, uh, cool, yeah, yeah, and jazz flute as well is great. If you ever get the chance to like listen to jazz flute or play jazz flute, some jazz musicians are like not some. Most jazz musicians are incredible. No, I, I think as classical it's, musicians, we have a lot to learn from them because they're so yeah, musical, yeah, yeah. so intelligent. Like the way they work yeah. through harmonies, yeah, yeah. And the harmony, yes. yeah, it's crazy, it's crazy. It's a yeah. lot of fun. Okay, if you could switch instruments but still be as good as you are, what would you switch instruments to? Hmm. You have to pick one. You can't say the flute. That's cheating. <laughs> oh, but the flute is an instrument, so I'm happy with flute. But uh, I don't know. Maybe singer. Yeah. Okay. Singer or. Um, p- piano. I love piano. Cello. Violin. Suppose being Italian as well. Singing is. Yeah, blood, but yeah, it? it's 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 nice, nice repertoire. <laughs> it is, yeah, and it's very Italian to be able to sing as well. Yeah, mm. that's a good one. Okay, singing. Um, but also the flute is close to. Yeah, it is very close sing. to singing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I find that with the Italian players as well. I feel like they play like opera stars sometimes. <laughs> yeah, Andrea Oli that always looks like an opera star to me. Yeah, I can see him on stage. Yeah, or, like, he wanted to be a singer. Actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think he could sing good still. I reckon he could still be a good singer. Uh, yeah, and he's very on Pavarotti style. Yeah, 100%. Pavarotti. Yeah, I could see that entirely. With <laughs> Yeah. Because he's got a very nice voice when he speaks as well. Yeah, yeah. And David Formizano could definitely be a singer. He has a proper, like, deep voice. He has one of those, like, oh, he could be a good singer. But James Galway, no. <laughs> Irish people, we're not born to sing. We don't no. sing. No, that's Italians. We leave you guys to do that. Um, if you could have... If you had to do a career outside of music so nothing to do with music what at all what would you do it's a good one it's a hard one isn't it yeah. hard i don't know uh of course i, I depends on ma- many careers uh, you have to um, to build since when you are young get True. musicians yeah or athlete. I, I sport, love sport. Yeah. Uh, so I love Olympic games and oh, yeah, okay. athletic. Yeah. So you would do sport, uh, you think? A dream, maybe, maybe uh, do the Olympic games. Would you rather do the Olympic games or play for Juventus? Huh. No, I think Olympic games. Really? Okay. More, yeah, okay. Olympic games are the. They are. They are incredible. Yeah. yeah maybe a final. Yeah. Um, okay. Play. Yeah. At the minute, you probably play for Juventus now. Actually, to be honest, considering how bad they're playing, you might be able to play for them. <laughs> maybe. But, um, okay. Two questions left. If you could have a drink with any musician, alive or dead, who would you have a drink with? And also, I should say, language doesn't matter, so you can speak the same language. Huh. Wow. It's a really hard one. This is really hard. I have to pick one. Yeah, you do. Unfortunately. 
I went with Beethoven. Mozart. Mozart, yeah. yeah. He'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah, you could have a drink with Mozart, yeah. Mozart. I read last night that Mozart during rehearsals used to act like a cat in rehearsals when he got bored. He used to start like meowing and rum- like ro- rolling over tables and stuff. I thought, <laughs> yeah, that sounds fun. A drink I with that. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's very interesting. And he'd be fun. Yeah. He would be fun. And the last question then, what is your favourite drink? It can be alcoholic or non-alcoholic. What would hmm. you have with Mozart? If you and Mozart went to the pub together, what are you ordering? The pub is beer. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. What kind of beer? Uh, Italian beer? Like Peroni or something? Or like no. a good Irish beer? I, I Depends. Depends on the season. Uh, I also oh. like Belgian beers, but oh, more too, in the yeah. winter season. Yeah. Yeah, because they're heavy. But also lager beer for uh, yeah. some... Uh, I love wine. Yeah. So I'm... I come from a very good wine region. Is it red wine in your region or both? Okay. But the red wine is pretty pretty good. Yeah, okay. Um, the Barolo is quite famous. Oh, it's Barolo from Yeah, I, oh, I, I, okay. I it's 30 minutes by car. Ah, okay. I know Barolo yeah. very well. Yeah. Barolo is so it's I an mean incredible whatever. One. Depends on on the moment. Okay. Uh, everyone uh, you you very need a uh, right <laughs> right food. Uh, no true yeah or well, a fish you true. need a white wine or uh, <laughs> yeah. d- different you're you're entirely correct i'm just thinking that's very italian of you to yeah. Have that answer. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great okay well then yeah we'll get back. do you have a favorite cocktail no do you drink cocktails uh, negroni ah oh, <laughs> this is the most italian thing i've ever had <laughs> negroni, of course <laughs> perfect uh, beautiful answer right well how long are we in the- there we are we're just 20 seconds off one hour perfect time and um before we go then i'll tell everybody Go get your album, go listen to it, go check it out. It's got three concertos in a row. It starts with the Mozart flute and harp, play beautifully with yourself and Claudio Chia, and then the Reinecke, and then it ends with Nietzsche. Is correct? Yeah, yeah that's your exactly. Great. So with the Odense Symphony Orchestra, absolutely superb album. It's available since a week now. Go check it out. Is there anything you want to plug or tell people to check out? Or are you all good? Go to listen and that's all. There you are. And then let us know how it went. Well, thank you very much, mate, thank for coming you. on. This has been a lot of fun. And yeah, cheerio, guys. We'll see you soon. <laughs>